Hi. In this video, we're going to take a look at the hypothesis test for matched pairs samples. In this test, we're going to take samples from two groups that are somehow related. It might be the same group of people in a before and after study, or the groups could be related as siblings or something like that. We're going to look at means for each of these two groups to determine if something has changed or whether or not uh, they are the same. Let's take a look. The hypothesis test for matched pairs data works a little bit different than the other hypothesis uh, tests we've studied. Uh, in this test, we're, we end up with two groups of data, and from those two groups of data, we actually make a third set of data, that is the set of data we actually use in the hypothesis test. So our data is, should be taken from simple, random, paired sample data. So as I said, we, we end up with two groups of data, let's say group one and group two, and each member of group one is matched up in some way to each member in group two. Uh, most often it's the same people in each group in some sort of before and after study. So we measure some value from an individual, then we have them do take some other action, and then we remeasure the same thing, and that second measurement uh, is our number from group two, the first measurement is the number from group one. And then from those we compute the difference between the two. Okay, so match pairs, so let's say we measure something and it's 10, and then we come back and measure the same value and it's now 12, so then the difference would be two. And then for another individual, maybe it's 28, and then we come back and measure it again, and it's 23. That would be a difference of negative five, for example. And this set of differences is the set we actually conduct the study on. So again, the requirements are our data should be taken from a simple random paired data sample. So again, uh, these measurements might come from the same person in group one and group two, or perhaps the members in group one are uh, brother or sister of the members in group two and they're matched up that way. But there's some relationship between each of the values in group one and the corresponding value in group two. This is called dependent sampling as opposed to independent samples which were required in the previous hypothesis test. So we want at least 30 pairs, that's the requirement, or if somehow we know that the difference between each of the pairs, so our new set of data that we compute, if we know that that is normally distributed, we don't need uh, that large of a sample size. And oftentimes that is the case. These differences often are normally distributed. So you will see these tests done with uh, relatively small sets of data uh, in many cases. The test statistic used here is the T statistic, and it's the difference between the sample mean difference and the population mean difference uh, divided by the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of sample means taken from our set of differences. Okay, uh, Again, our calculator is going to compute the test statistic for us. So those are the requirements we want to meet, and let's take a look at an example. Okay, so a new study course promises to increase a student's score on the ACT exam. A random sample of individuals who took the ACT exam without taking the study course were selected and their scores were recorded. So that would be the before data. Then the individuals in the sample completed the study course, retook the ACT exam, and their scores were recorded. And that would be the after data. Okay, so notice here our two sets of data come from the same individuals, so that qualifies as matched, uh, matched pair samples. It's the same people in both the before and the after group. Okay, so our job is to test the claim that the new study course improves ACT scores at the 5% level of significance, and we're going to assume that the differences are normally distributed. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is enter our data into the calculator. So I'm going to enter the before data into list one, and I'm going to enter the after data in list two. So I'm going to go to stat, and I'm going to choose edit, and I'm going to clear out what I have in list one, and then I'm going to go ahead and enter the before data.
Then I'm going to go over to list two. If something's already in list two, go up to the top and clear it out. And then we're going to enter the after data in list two. Then we want to go over to list three, go up to the top to the column heading for list three and press enter. And that will take you down to the bottom of your screen and you want to type in L2 minus L1. So to get L2 you're going to press second and the two button that you should see L2. Then we're going to do the minus sign and then we're going to press second and the one button to bring up L1. So I want I'm entering a formula here in list three, uh, L2 minus L1, and then if you press enter, it'll populate L3 with all of the differences from each of your data pairs. And this is the set of data we're going to do the test on. Okay? So let's write our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis here is going to be that the before mean score and the after mean score are the same. And the way we would write that is that the mean difference between the two scores is zero. Okay, so your null hypothesis is going to be that the data is the same, which means all the differences should have a mean of zero. And then our alternate hypothesis, uh, really you want to think about whether or not uh, the score should go up or down. So in this case, the claim is that the scores will go up. So that means if I take the after data minus the before data, I should get a positive number. Okay, If your claim in the study indicates uh, values should go down, then your alternate hypothesis would be that the mean difference is less than zero. But the way I defined my difference uh, when I entered the data in the calculator, I defined my differences as L2 minus L1. So if the claim is that L2 should be a bigger value than L1, your alternate hypothesis is going to be that the mean difference is positive. Okay? If we're looking at a claim where the values in L2 should be smaller than the value in L1, then our alternate would be uh, that the mean difference is negative. Okay? But in our example, uh, we're going to be doing a right-tailed test. Okay? So now I'm going to find my test statistic, which is the T statistic. I'm going to go to stat again. I'm going to go over to tests and I'm going to do just the basic t-test. So that's option number two on your list of statistical tests, the t-test. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to data mode since I entered the data. So we want data to be highlighted. The mean for my null hypothesis is zero and that's usually the case when you do this test. You usually are going to have zero here. The list of data I want to look at is L3, so I'm going to change this to L3 by pressing 2nd and then 3 button. Frequency should be 1, and then you need to pick 2-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed test. And again, looking at my alternate hypothesis, I want the right-tailed test. So that's the third option. And then I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. My T statistic is 3.0. 086 and my p-value here is 0 0.005 and we compare that to alpha in this case it is less than alpha alpha was 0 0.05 this is smaller than that and if our p-value is smaller than alpha we are going to reject the null and in this case rejecting the null means we believe that uh, the study course did actually improve ACT exams. Okay, Our null hypothesis is that there was no difference in the two sets of data. We've rejected that. So we have found significant evidence that the after scores were higher than the before scores. So our conclusion would be there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the study course improved ACT scores. Okay, let's look at one more example. A baseball player drinks a certain high caffeine energy drink before every game because he claims that it improves his reaction time. To test that theory, a random sample of 14 individuals were given a test used to measure reaction time, were then asked to drink one of the energy drinks, and then were given the same test again to measure their reaction time. 
Assuming that the reaction time differences are normally distributed, test the baseball player's claims at the 0 0.01 level of significance. Okay, so our null hypothesis here again is going to be that there's no difference between the before and after time. Okay, so we're going to state that as uh, the mean difference is zero. The alternate hypothesis we need to look at what's being claimed here. The baseball player claims that this is going to improve his reaction time. So an improved reaction time means that the reaction time should go down. Okay. So our claim is that the second set of data, our after data, should be lower than our first set of data, or the before data. So if I compute the differences the same way I did in the last example, our alternate hypothesis is going to be that the mean difference is less than zero. So again, you want to articulate how you're computing the difference. I always do mine uh, as list two minus list one. So in other words, after minus before. Okay, I'd recommend always defining D the same way. That way, uh, your job is just to figure out whether this number should be positive or negative. Okay, so in this case, because my claim is that the after value should be lower, then if I do after minus before, I would have a negative number. So that's how I'm going to state my alternate hypothesis. Again, the, the previous example we did, we were expecting the numbers to go up. So our alternate was that the mean difference is positive. But here uh, we have values that we expect to go down. So our mean difference could be negative. Okay, so here we're going to be doing a left tail test. So I'm going to find my T statistic. Okay, next I need, before I find my T statistic, I need to enter the data. So I'm going to go to stat and edit, and I'm going to clear out all of these lists uh, from the previous example. So I'm going to clear out L3, I'm going to clear out L2, and I'm going to clear out L1. And I'm going to enter my before data in L1 and my after data in L2. Okay, so I've got my first two lists of data in here. I'm going to go over to L3. I'm going to go up to the top and press enter. And again, I'm going to put L2 minus L1 as my formula. And that should populate L3 with all of the differences. Then I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to go over to tests and I'm going to choose option number two, the t-test and everything should stay the same. I want data selected. I want the null mean to be zero. I'm going to use a list three again. The only difference is here, now I'm doing a left-tailed test because my alternate hypothesis is that the mean is negative. So I want to choose the second of those three options and then I'm going to calculate. So my T statistic here is negative one point eight three six and that is good for a p-value of point zero four five okay I compare that to alpha in this case my p-value is greater than alpha because alpha was point zero one which means we will not reject the null okay and what does that mean in this situation? Our null hypothesis is that the energy drink makes no difference, and we did not find statistical evidence to reject this null. Okay? We did not have strong enough evidence that the reaction time improved uh, taking the drink. Notice in most of these pairs it did improve a little bit, but based off this, based off this small random sample and the small differences, that we found, we do not have enough statistical evidence to say that yes, this high caffeine drink improves reaction time. Okay, so the appropriate conclusion would be there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the energy drink improves reaction time. So there are a couple examples of a hypothesis test comparing uh, the mean differences from matched pair data samples.